My question is um, for uh, for Gordon, but um, Fernando can also answer. Okay. Um, you have said um, in the past forums that one of the first steps of solving the Mindanao problem and the conflict that arise in that region is to understand our Muslim brothers and sisters. In your years of service and in going to Mindanao, do you yourself understand their situation? What is your understanding then and what can you convey to the rest of the Filipino nation and to us today so that we can start this process of solving this long conflict in the South? First of all, it's not Mindanao. It's uh, the Muslim uh, situation. So Mindanao is okay. It's just a certain portion of Mindanao that you have a problem with. And uh, I didn't just say understand it. I said respect, understand, and accept. Okay. You know, you have to respect our Muslim brothers. Principally because even before the Spaniards came here, they were already here. And when the Spaniards came here, they asserted their character. Lapu-Lapu, Surongan, Malbapak, Sultan Kudarat, they were never beaten by the Spaniards except for Sultan Kudarat for a while. So when I look at it, I pay respect to that. And I would like to see not just a trace in the sand, but the first race should have been the Muslim race. Because Lapu-Lapu was the first Asian to beat the colonial invader. He is both Tausug and Misaya. So you have to accept also their ways. Remember that Islamic culture is one of the most fantastic cultures in the world. And uh, they brought us algebra, uh, they brought us a lot of things, you know, designs. Uh, and it, they influenced Spain for that matter. The patios, all these uh, arches that you see, the churches are even influenced by them. Uh, design, uh, even dresses, uh, uh, you know, the panuelo, uh, that's really part of a parcel of the Muslim peoples. Now, when you look at our Muslims here, they were marginalized because uh, when Spain came here, he discovered, oh, it's the Muslims again. It's the Moros again. They called them Moros in Spain. Uh, they were conquered for 800 years by, and there was a reconquista that they called it, trying to get back their country from the Berbers first and then the Moorish, and that's why they were called Moros. So when Magellan was demolished by Lapu Lapu, defeated, and we say that in our national anthem as Samalulupik Dika Pasisiru, they said, oh no, it's the Moros again. So they made, they put St. James of Compostela here, defeating the Muslims, the infidels, and then what happened? They made the Muslims, those who were not converted, as our enemies, the same way they forced some of the Muslims in, in, in Spain to become Moriscos, and they did the same thing to us. So, naging kalaban natin, hindi natin dapat kalaban. So, pag nakita nyo sa mga piyesta natin, Moro-Moro, pag May Time Festival, di ba, Moro-Moro, parang kalaban natin, ang kalaban natin ng mga Muslim. So, to make a long story short, uh, what has happened since then, uh, remember that the Sultanate of Sulu was one of the most fantastic sultanates in the world. They were able to help uh, Brunei and Borneo get Saba, and that was the reward for helping them uh, to, 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 when they try, tried to beat the, revolu the rebellions out there. And then, of course, the, uh, uh, when they when they created the Sultan of Sulu, remember it was uh, Paduka, I think is his name, uh, who went to China long before the Spaniards came here. And he was honored by the Emperor of China. So you see, you have all these things happening in our country. Then they are all suddenly marginalized and excluded. That's the beginning of the problem. You exclude them, and you distinguish them as an enemy, then what happens? Until they marginalize them, until eventually, what do you have? When you go to Sulu, what used to be the Sultanate of Sulu, which is a lot better than Manila or Cebu or Sugbu, a long time ago before the Spaniards came, has become very impoverished. And what do you have now? Kids can't even go to school with good teachers out there takot magbigay ng examen yung Professional Regulatory Commission. So volunteer teachers sila. I had to report that to Gloria Macapagaloroyo when I visited there. Kita mo, because of the gulo there, bata pa kami, may Kamlun na, may MNLF, may MILF, ngayon ASG. We always fight, but we don't try to fix the problem. So, education is the problem. Health is the problem. Lack of infrastructure is the problem. Uh, they cannot even sell their products. This one's proud race, who used to conquer Spain, who beat Spain and beat the other you know, in combat, 
are now, you're trying to make them farmers, but even if they farm, they cannot sell their mangosteen, they cannot sell their durian, you know. And so, ayaw pumunta doon ng Department of Trade, tatapot. So they get poorer and poorer, and because they get poorer and poorer, the only choice is to go back to the guns, or their uh, ambinas and their grist, no? and all that. So to make a long story short, this situation has perpetrated itself upon our country, and because of that, ang tingin natin sila kalakalaban, uh, we have never really tried to uphold their dignity, we have not really uphold their education. Ang masama pa dyan, araw ang policy pumunta ang Tegalusyon sa Mindanao, and because many of them were uneducated, the Christians were able to get a lot of their lands, and it's not the fault of the Christians, but you know, when you try to develop a country, you go like the United States, they move forward, and if the adaptability to change isn't there, and if the opportunities for change is reserved exclusively to Christians and not to Muslims, what happens is conflict and exclusion. So, in my experience, when I got there and reported that, I went back there and got a C-130 and we got the fruits of these people, put them on a C-130 and sold it here in Manila for 130 pesos. 100 pesos. Kinuha ng Christians yan. There they could only sell it for 5 pesos. Yung mga crabs nila namamatay ng high blood pressure. Naglagawa sila ng preserve, sila na bumibili, sila sila lang. So there is no value for what they do. So, you know, there's a lot of pain out there and you have to assuage that pain. There's a lot of anger on the part of many people also who were kidnapped. So you have to find a way to try and put in investment. If I were president, one of the first things I might do is get an island in Sulu and show them that it can be a tourism enclave. You know, uh, bring domestic tourism there. After all, Sipadan is right next to Sulu. Kaya kaya punta ng Abu Sayyaf yan, ang hindi kasi nado. Dito kaya kaya rin kundi ng Abu Sayyaf yung turista. But if you show that pwedeng kumita other than the gun, na pwede ka maglagay doon ng mga sila mismo ang magpapatakbo and they can make money out of the tourism business, you have to invest in it. And I think there will be slowly a difference in attitude. One of the manifestations of that is I added a ninth rate to the sand that's already approved. They're just sitting in the Congress. Uh, I created the monument for Lapu Lapu. I want the Muslim Islamic cultural history of the Philippines in Intramuros. There's already money for that. And then they released in Gauri Makapaglaroyo. This is the second year that ma that money is there. And at the same time, create an ecclesiastical history of the Philippines. Put them together so people can see the progress of Islam, the progress of the church in our country, and therefore get a better understanding. The other thing I'd like to do is have Muslim children come over and live with Christian's home, Christian homes, you know, make them uh, do the things together. You know, wala naman tayong tension katulad ng ibang bayan, katulad ng Israel. But still, it is always better to try and engage. Enable, engage, and ennoble. Respect, understand, and accept. Thank you.